looking at the matched filter and the channel inversion filter. And I'm going to use a digital communications example. So let's start with a scalar case where we've got data X being sent as a symbol, uh, a modulated symbol, uh, going into a channel and then noise is in the receiver. And so this is our received measurement. And I always like to think about this in terms of waveforms. So X, for example, uh, if we were doing BPSK, uh, then you'd have a cos waveform for the positive one, for a digital one, and you'd have a inverted cos waveform for the negative one, for the digital um, zero. So you'd have these two waveforms in time, uh, and one of them would be for a digital one and the other one for a digital zero. Okay, so that's X. X can take the, be either of those waveforms, but we're representing X here in baseband. Okay, so in baseband, uh, these two waveforms can be represented by a complex number, and that's what this equation is showing. Uh, and this complex number is on the real and imaginary. The real represents the cos wave, the imaginary, the sine wave. Uh, and in this case, this one would be over here with a plus one, because there's one uh, component of the cos uh, and no sine. And this one would be the negative one over here. So these, these are the waveforms that you're sending, but this is how they're represented on the complex diagram. Okay, so what do, that's the x. What about h? Well, what h is going to do is multiply x by a complex number. And that means for these waveforms, it's going to rotate these waveforms or, or uh, shift the phase and uh, um, multiply the amplitude. And this happens if uh, in a wireless communications, for example, if this signal uh, bounces off a wall, some of the energy is absorbed, uh, and depending on the path length between the transmitter and the receiver, uh, it will be received with a phase which is offset from this phase. So this is what H is doing. H in this baseband representation is a complex number which multiplies these complex numbers because this complex number here is 1 comma 0 and this is minus 1 comma 0 and h is going to multiply those and what that does is it rotates and scales and so for example this might have moved to over to here uh, and therefore this one would have uh, moved to here. This is one example of h of, of the effect of h on x moving them to these two points. Okay, and then there's noise is added. So I'm going to draw a circle around this, which indicates a, a Gaussian noise cloud around there. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly on the circle, of course. It's a Gaussian, uh, but I'm just drawing the circle to indicate that the noise is going to mean that this signal here is received, not exactly at the X, uh, but somewhere else. So it might be that the noise made it be received over here. So just to reiterate, this is the, the complex representation of the signal that went in if a plus one was sent. Uh, digital plus one. The H causes it to be, this constellation to be rotated and scaled, and then the noise means that you're going to receive some different value, not that value. And the, t the challenge is, is to take Y and to try to develop an estimate of X. Try to learn what the signal was that was sent to you. Okay, so one way of doing this uh, is to, let's say, uh, we're going to say an up hat to be an estimate, one is to do channel inversion. And we're just talking about this in a scalar just for the moment. So let's think first of all about channel inversion. So channel inversion is, is if you know the value of the channel at the receiver, and that's what we're going to assume in all of this video, then uh, you, and you can do that by sending a training signal beforehand and, and measuring the value of the channel. Then you can take your received value and multiply by the inverse of that channel. So you take Y, which you've received, multiply by the inverse of the channel, and that will give you, as you see, H inverse times H will recover X, and then you'll be also having H inverse times N. So uh, what the good thing about this is, this effectively takes these points and rotates them back to the original in the constellation diagram because you've got the X component unchanged, you've removed the effect of H, but now the N, which was a cloud around that point, is now going to be multiplied by the inverse of H. Now, if the inverse of H, if, if H was small, and it was a small number, and so these points were 
um, um, rotated and scaled close to the origin, for example, then H inverse is going to be a big number. And so that is what we call noise enhancement, because the H inverse is going to mean that this component, the noise component, which is throwing you off from the value that you're trying to send, that component is going to be big. So that's a problem with channel inversion. And we'll see that more when we talk about zero forcing later. Okay, another thing you could do. So this is one thing you could do, but there's other things you can do. So what else could you do? Well, let's look at a thing which is called the matched filter. And it turns out that the one other thing you could do is multiply by the complex conjugate of H. Instead of inversion of H, let's do the complex conjugate of H. And so now we're going to have H complex conjugate times H times X plus H complex conjugate times N. And in this case, we don't recover x exactly, so it hasn't rotated these points exactly back to plus 1 and minus 1. It's put them at a different location. The, the important thing, though, is even though it hasn't put them back, it's put it at those two points at a location where the noise is not as affected as this original location was affected. This was H inverse, and as we said, we had that problem with noise enhancement. In this case, it puts those that x, it rotates them to a place where they are still far apart. What you want them to be, of course, is you want the plus one and the minus one to be far apart so that you can easily detect whether it was a plus one or a minus one. When H pulls them close in, this one here inverts them so they go back out, which is great, but you have noise enhancement. In this case, we're not moving them back to plus one and minus one, we're moving them to another location, but the it's a location where this noise does not have such a big impact, as I just said before. And what it what what is so good about this way is, and why it's called a, well, it's matching the, why is it called a match filter? Because H uh, complex conjugate times H, your, your receive filter is matched to the channel. So that's why it's called a matched filter. And there's another video on this channel with more information about match filters if you check the details below the video. And what the property of this is that it maximizes, if you do it this way, it maximizes this signal to noise ratio at the receiver. So the match filter maximizes the signal to noise ratio. So if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the information below the video for links to other videos and a web page where there's a full categorized list of videos on the channel.